Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. We are back. It is good to be back. We got the big one for you today. Bam Rodriguez, Juan Francisco Estrada, what promises to be a career-defining fight, a crossroads fight. Uh, but before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Uh, the Boxing Book, it comes out to you for every single... Ooh. Comes for every single major fight, so you had to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. The odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing. I do. Uh, I'm going to show you how to bring down the house, join the Patreon, get the lock of the week. A uh, link is in the description. It's also in the banner below. The Patreon gets you the lock of the week. It gets you all the perks. It gets you ask the bookie anything. It gets you access to all the prop bets and live betting that's not available when I release the video. Uh, so join the Patreon. Just five dollars a month, so support and get rich while doing it. Uh, we hit the lock, like I said, pretty much every single week. All right, y'all. Let's get into today's show. All right, also, subscribe to our channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds are going to go to Autism Research and Recovery. All right, y'all. Let's get into today's show. Bam Rodriguez, Juan Francisco Estrada. Good backstory. Juan Francisco Estrada, Duck Josh Franco, the brother of of Ben Rodriguez um, not long ago, just a couple of years ago. Um, he gave up a belt to avoid him. He fought Archie Cortez instead. It's a whole long story. Now he, his brother finally gets him in, in the ring for his title in, in what promises, well, we don't need to get into that. But uh, Ben Rodriguez has arrived, fighter of the year candidate in, in 2021. I'm sorry, 2022. Breakthrough performance, best performance of his career in 2023 with Sonny Edwards. Now on most pound for pound list. Amazing reflexes and speed, quick feet, amazing angles. He's never straight in. He's always from an angle, always from the side, never uses the front door, always knocks down a side door. He strikes quick with counter shots, accurate counter He landed 62% of his power shots on Charlie Edwards, who's supposed to be a slick defensive fighter. He's one of the greats. I think Bam Rodriguez, after the top three guys, I think goes to the conversation with with any of them. I, I think Bam Rodriguez is that good. Right now you have, in a way, Usyk, Bud, toss them up however you'd like to rank them. I know how I'd like to rank them, but however you want to rank them, toss them up. Those are your top three. After that, I think Bam Rodriguez is in the conversation with anyone. He uses his jab well, sets things up with it, Accurate with his power shots and counters. Great timing. He's got that nice popping jab. Pop, pop, pop. And then he'll put the, the left hand behind it. He'll mix in the right hook. He's out for obviously. He digs the body really well. Offensively, I mean, he's, he's as good as he gets. There's no flaws. He's as complete an offensive fighter as there is in the sport, and that includes guys like Terrence Crawford. I mean, offensively, he is such a beast. And most of it is, is due to his incredible angles and footwork. He cuts off the ring well. Like I said, his, his, everything he does with his feet is simply amazing. Beautiful combination of puncher. Avoid shots well. It's his angles. He scores. He lands, and he's out of the way where you can't hit him again. He stalks you down. Good power. You know, not amazing one-punch power, but he's got, you know, very good power. That lands on the button, and that's what does it so well. It's not that he's the biggest puncher, but he lands with accuracy, and he lands on the button. Good hand speed, good combinations, excellent uh, excellent finisher, beautiful straight shots. He's really accurate from long range. To kind of break him down, southpaw, great feet, amazing angles, good pop, good volume. It's just he checks all the boxes, mixes up levels well. He checks every single box that there is. He puts his punches together exceptionally well, so well, so accurate. And then defensively, his feet are so good, he's just not in the way. He's just not there to be hit. Juan Francisco Estrada is a legend. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Juan Francisco Estrada. Juan Francisco Estrada is a Hall of Famer. I think he gets a little overrated because he's got some wins that he doesn't really deserve. Namely, two wins over Chocolatito in... About a year and a half span, he got two decisions over Chocolatito. I thought he lost both. Uh, I do think the second one, the third fight, which would be a second win, was debatable. You could go either way. 
Uh, the second fight back in late in early 2021, I thought he clearly lost. That was in Dallas. I was there for that. I didn't even think it was close. I thought he clearly lost. Uh, and that was coming off the, the, the stoppage of Quadras. He's got a win over Quadras early in his career back in September of 2017, which I thought he lost. So he's gotten the benefit of some close decisions. He's got a win over over. So Rungi Vasai, he also has a loss to Sir Rungi Vasai. I, I thought that win, although competitive, was appropriate. And I thought he, he lost, you know, he's gotten wins he doesn't deserve, is how I'm looking at it. Big wins, career-defining wins. And I don't think he deserved really any of them. You know, I feel this way about Triple G, too. I feel Triple G's got a lot of wins he doesn't deserve. I feel Estrada's gotten the benefit of the, set, of, of the doubt in many decisions, but he's never lost a decision that he should have won, right? So it's kind of been a perfect storm for him. I think on top of all that, he's slowed, he's aging, his output, his punch output has dropped, his feet are slow, his hand feet are slower. He's straight in. Now, in the Chocolatino fight, he was using the ring more, but you saw it in the second half, he faded, and I thought he lost the fight because he lost all the rounds in the second half. I thought he lost 6-12 to 12 and round 3, right? And he won 1, 2, 4, and 5. That's how I saw the fight. There were close rounds in there. The other rounds you could toss up, but that's how I saw it. I think he's at his best as a as a front foot fighter. I don't know what we're gonna get from him in the band fight. He's got a durable chin and he had a good gas tank, but he seems to be aging, and I don't know if his gas tank is what it used to be. Good power, selective with his shots. He's not a huge volume guy, but he selects his shots well. He doubles up the right hand. He does good things. He does good work from the outside, and he's got big, you know. Big pop. He's an excellent finisher. He's a pro. He's a very good pro. He's very good. Mixes up his combinations, mixes up levels. He, he does a lot of things really well. He's got a really good jab, sharp, sharp jab, scores with it at will. He can fight off the back foot, like we saw with, with the third Chocolatito fight. I, I just don't know. Like, if he does that, eventually he's going to tire and slow, and then he's going to have to sit and bang with Rodriguez. Ultimately, this fight is going to come down to him and Rodriguez banging it out. The only question is, does it come early in the fight? Does uh, as far as think, okay, I'm the bigger, more experienced guy. I'm going to come vote, or does it come when he slows down? Either way, I think Bam stops him. I think ultimately that's what we're looking at. I, I don't think he can avoid Bam. I, I don't even think he's really going to try to sit there and really avoid Bam. I don't think that's going to be his. I, I don't think that's going to be his mo here. I, I think they're going to sit and they're going to fight. They're going to fight in the mid range and they're going to fight in a phone booth. And I, I think Estrada may have some moments, but ultimately Bam's going to take him apart. I don't think it's going to be as one sided as the Saw running beside fight, but I think that's a decent template of what we can expect. I think he'll do a little better. I think he's got a little bit more left in the tank, but he's old. He's not what he was. I think he slowed. He's been inactive. Just, you know, two fights. I mean, he fought once in 2022. No, he fought twice in 2022 and not at all in 2023. So it's been a year and a half out of the ring. Bam's gotten work too with Chocolatito. I think that's going to help him. I think everything just lines up here for a Bam Rodriguez win. I think he gets a stoppage too. Now I'm going to pull up the odds on this and they don't have the props on it yet. What they do have is the money line. I love Bam on a money line. I would make a two times bet on this. Bam's winning this fight. The odds aren't terrible. If you're adding this to your parlay, a $200 bet's going to make you 40 bucks. I think this is, I don't know what my parlay is yet. For the week, you're going to have to join the Patreon to get that parlay. The Patreon is five dollars a month. Link is in the description. It's also in the banner below. But uh, we're gonna add. This is gonna be added to the parlay. Additionally, um, I'm, I'm freaking losing my brain. We're gonna look to add the stoppage. We're gonna look to take Bam by stoppage. We're gonna look at what the odds are on that, and uh, we're gonna bet either the under or Bam Rodriguez by stoppage, depending on what the odds are. They aren't out yet. This is all DraftKings has. But as we get later in the week, guys, join the Patreon, $5 a month. I'm going to show you how to make money on the stoppage too because there's not a ton of money to make here, right? This $200 bet, two times regular bet. In this case, $200 is going to make you just 40 bucks. 
But it's a good bet to bring down the odds in your poly too, because this is safe. Bam Rodriguez is assuredly going to win this fight. And at minus 500, why not take it, bring down the odds on, on your poly? We can put a three-piece poly together and, and really hit it. Let me know uh, what you guys think on that. Again, join the Patreon. Link is in the description. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing blog. On all forms of social media, the boxing book comes at you for every single major fight. So you have consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. Guys, there's always a bull market somewhere. Let's bring down the house together. It is June 23rd, 2024, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.